I've suffered from heat exhaustion in some ultra marathons. Um, in one particular example, I should have had a hat on for a part of the race, but I'm thinking, oh, I'm Mr. Natural. I love sunshine. It's not going to hurt me. But I got too much sun on the top of my head and I, I didn't get burned at all, but I did get too hot on the top of my head and it caused me to get, have heat exhaustion. And the, the, the symptom that I got from that was nausea. It was in the form of nausea. I just, I couldn't, um, I could, my food just didn't sit well. It didn't matter if I drank water or ate food. It just, I, I just felt nausea. Uh, and it went on for hours and hours and I, and I just couldn't shake it. And I, I just kept forcing food down little, in little doses and, and it would cause nausea. I'd have, um, I'd eat less and less each time and, and it, the problem still didn't go away. I'd try to go for longer periods without eating or um, try to separate drinking water from eating food and all these things. And, and I just kept having this nausea kept coming up every time I drank or ate. And so what I ended up doing was uh, about oh, 80 miles into this race, 120 kilometers into the race, I just stopped eating and drinking. <laughs> And, and I, I, I actually didn't eat or drink for, for like a, a few hours. Like it was, it was more than two hours. And, and I just, I slowed down and just kind of shuffled along. And that period of rest for my digestion um, just gave me enough time to, for the stomach to settle. And then I was able to eat food and drink water for the rest of the race. And I finished. Um, and, and I did a reasonably good time at the end of the day. So. That was one, one approach that worked for me.